Harapu Cleaning Services is a leading professional cleaning and allied services company and features among the country's top 100 companies. Established 14 years ago, the Mitsis farm has enjoyed phenomenal growth, consolidating its position in the sector as a leading cleaning and support service provider of choice in East and Central Africa. The farm currently services 200 corporates including foreign missions, schools and institutions, parastatals, NGOs, service departments, insurance companies, banks, medical institutions and members clubs. The company is also an equal opportunity employer, creating 2,000 jobs directly and a further additional 4,000 indirectly. Banking on innovation to further grow its revenue, Parapet has diversified and expanded its product offering to include specialized detailed cleaning, office cleaning, tea service, a domestic service, fumigation and pest control, garbage collection, and apartment and swimming pool service. Going forward, the company aspires to be the leader in cleaning and support services in Africa through staff empowerment and quality service with a difference. After the break, we speak to the company's managing director, Alex Nyaga, on The View from the Top. Welcome back to the program. This is part two of the show, View from the Top. I am Richard Kagoy. Now joining us in the program, as you've just seen there on our preceding uh, feature segment, we're talking about the cleaning services sector. And we're privileged to have with us in the program the Managing Director at Parapet Cleaning Services, Alex Nyaga. Alex, nice to see you. Welcome to the program. Is it too late for me to say Happy New Year? <laughs> well, uh, Happy New Year to you too. It's, it's a great year ahead. Uh, okay, it, yeah. excellent. Um, we decided to kick off uh, you know, our theme of, of our program pay setters this year uh, with a special focus on mid-sized companies and also some bit of emphasis on uh, SMEs. And uh, quite a great story that uh, some of us have had the privilege of uh, interacting uh, you know, with materials about uh, your company and uh, the growth that you've experienced uh, for quite some time. But maybe where we could start off uh, this conversation is maybe just to understand the genesis of uh, Parapet Cleaning Services. Where did this story begin? Well, this story began uh, in about 14 years ago. Uh, in 1998, and um, it was it was put together by five entrepreneurs um, who had the vision of being able to change uh, the whole landscape of uh, the outsource uh, services within the hospitality industry. And uh, cleaning services was one of them. And um, we started off with uh, I'm a hotelier by profession, and when we started it off. Uh, it was with that in mind that we offer solutions with a difference within the housekeeping sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how it started. And our first job was with, um, was uh, actually we started running before crawling uh, as a business uh, by, by going into large projects. And our first large project was the airport, then the Tomokinati International Airport which uh, ideally was a great, great place setter for us to be able to differentiate ourselves from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. How is it uh, convincing KAA that uh, you guys are still on startup, that you're capable of uh, executing this job? But then I'm not so quite sure if uh, outsourcing uh, concept had really, be, people have been acquainted to it. Well, well first and foremost, the outsourcing concept mm -hmm. was, was very, um, it was in the it's in infant stage, mm -hmm. so to speak, because um, at that time a lot of companies were still doing their businesses more in, uh, less in-house, uh, and um, and globally at that point was when uh, a lot of international organisations were looking at uh, outsourcing as a solution towards uh, concentrating on their core core function of their businesses. Uh, so uh, it was actually I uh, call it timely because um, then a lot of Kenyan uh, companies, the larger ones, corporates, were actually looking at that as a solution to be able to, to get out of um, some of those uh, non-core functions, such as security, uh, cleaning services, to remember a mm -hmm. um, Well, at that time when we came on board, um, you asked a, a very vital question about wh why us. Um, it's because we put in a a very professional team together. Um, 
and a professional team that had a great passion for this service. And, uh, and not to mention their know-how in, in relation to handling such a huge facility. Uh, in the beginning, actually, we had no idea which, which, uh, which organization we were building for. It was an expression of interest that was put into the dailies. Uh, and we had to, uh, of, of, uh, of an expression of interest indicating that we we're, were building for an international airport uh, within Africa. So we had no idea what we were looking at. Um, for us, it was, a, it was a passion for a greater vision of, uh, of this kind of service. And uh, look, that's why we are here today. <laughs> okay. What differentiated you? Because I know there were other players in the market then. Mm. What really distinct? You know, dis you know, distinguished you from the rest? Well, um, I think it's a team. First and foremost, mm -hmm. uh, you need to invest in people. And that's what Pirate had set out to do from the beginning, uh, by getting the right people to be able to do the right job. Um, and uh, not only that, to be able to align ourselves with the international standards of cleanliness at that point. So invest heavy investment in equipment, uh, heavy investment in the right titans to be able to do the work. Um, and um, and putting uh, structures in place from a board to the management team and so on uh, to be able to manage this whole entire function. Uh, I think um, a lot of small medium enterprises um, look at starting things as a one-man show and that in itself presents a danger of it in a short-term business. Mm -hmm. um, I think from the onset, one of the parapet strengths has been that we put out structures from the beginning to be able to run a, a long-term and a successful organization, uh, looking forward to actually mm -hmm. outliving those who started it off. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, what was it like starting out? Because of course uh, you learned here a very big contract, JKIA, mm -hmm. and uh, most uh, businesses, especially during their formative stages, and when they're starting out, they normally have a problem facilitation. That's in financing. Uh, I mean, did it mean, does it mean that uh, you, you had your act together and everything was uh, in the right place? Well, for every new business, <laughs> there's nothing easy about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the greatest handicap uh, for any startup business is, is financing. Um, but uh, one thing that is very critical, uh, financing is outweighed by... Uh, First and foremost, the vision and the dream of what you want to achieve out of any startup that you, you set out to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of businesses uh, which have been successful over the past have been just set out just by a good dream, uh, by the entrepreneurs starting up a new concept and, 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 and following it through and believing in it. Then the rest comes into place. Um, and uh, the investments that were put in there were well, all those uh, were personal. So if you, are, if, you, if you believe in it, you, you put in the investment in terms of your savings uh, uh, and um, the other support systems such as banks uh, and, uh, and, um, and loans and so on yeah. actually did assist uh, get us to where we are. Okay. Yeah. Just describe to us the progression 14 years on mm -hmm. from your onset. That's about 1996, 97 thereabout. Uh, well, from 98. 98. The thing is, um, we went through the natural phase of in every startup organization mm -hmm. uh, where, first and foremost, you are um, you're not known at all. <laughs> um, so you're trying to, to sell as much as you can uh, and uh, on the, on the, on the mm -hmm. assumption that mm -hmm. there, is, uh, mm -hmm. there is somebody who is mm -hmm. looking at um, the experiences. I would, I would put it in the, in the same light as a job interview, for instance. A lot of times, anybody who goes in for a job interview, the first thing that they always refer to, where have you been before, what's mm -hmm. your experience? And yet, uh, the experience uh, may be deferred to that of just education. Uh, and, but a lot of employers look forward to having somebody who has worked for a couple of years. So the same um, challenges that are fresh out of campus sort of student uh, faces when starting, uh, when looking out to, to get employed are the same challenges that any startup business has to go through. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went through that phase um, for about uh, three or four years. And um, then there's what we call a breakthrough, I mean, the breakthrough stage where 
you get this anchor client. Mm -hmm. And once the anchor client comes on board, then people start recognizing you with that particular anchor client. They take you seriously. They now take you seriously. Mm -hmm. These guys are doing this particular facility, then these guys must be knowing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and they are on, um, uh, after four years, then now you start building on, uh, on, on your client base that way. Mm -hmm. And as you continue growing that way, it's, it's also looking at how do I ensure that I, there was a stage now of being recognized um, as, 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 a, as, a, as a dominant uh, um, service provider within that's, uh, the hospitality sector. Mm -hmm. So this comes in about the eighth, ninth year, when now, uh, but for every sector it's different. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's all about um, uh, the appetite that uh, consumers have in terms of accepting uh, the kind of service that is being provided at a particular time. Mm -hmm. um, but for parapet in itself, I mean, um, we 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 set out to to have a consistent mm -hmm. means of ways of having to deliver services uh, and uh, a consistent way in building our brand. And um, this is the stage that we are at today, uh, 14 years down the line in terms of now uh, ensuring that we are uh, we're putting out our brand out there to be able to to get um, to get the, the consumers to appreciate it uh, and the brand has to be consistent to the values and uh, uh, and the processes that we we've set out to uh, and the policies that we believe in in, in ensuring that uh, we're delivering exceptional services to all our clients mm -hmm. yeah. and so do you align uh, you know some of your policies and uh, your processes and to international best practices yes we do mm -hmm. and uh, even subscribe to uh, international organizations such as international sanitary services association issa a recognized body uh, within it and um, actually one of the few companies uh, within eastern central africa uh, to be recognized as one of those uh, alumni of there of mm -hmm. the association. Okay. Um, with this in mind, uh, we, we, we are even um, uh, on the process of finalizing our ISO certification uh, in line with the international standards for that. Mm -hmm. So we should be ISO certified in the next quarter. In the and next quarter, quarter. very hopeful. Yes, it, for sure. So for instance, I know part, you, you've, you've diversified over time in your product offering. And um, say maybe I want you to come and clean my house. Mm -hmm. But still, I have some bit of hesitation, mm -hmm. and what I would like to know is, the the the, the people that you task with the cleaning, uh, you know, jobs, uh, do they really go through, say, perhaps, uh, are they filtered to maybe through a vetting process, mm -hmm. and uh, do they go through some training because it's not just cleaning, but do they get some bit of training to perform those tasks? Yes, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, one of the things that uh, Parapet builds on is, uh, is on the value of our people. Mm -hmm. um, we value our staff highly, and um, with that, we also look at the um, expectations of our dear clients. Um, we have uh, very endearing and, and high-value clients, and we have high expectations, of course. And uh, we have to match that with the provision of the said uh, personnel to be able to ensure that they are working in, uh, in, a, in a good, safe environment. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, we set out to do is ensure that they're highly vetted mm -hmm. uh, through the security um, forces within the country, so CID and so on, and uh, NSS, to be able to ensure that we're getting the right people on board. Once you have that, as, as, as a stage that we call empowerment, now we, uh, we empower them through training, each of our staff, before they join us into a team, they go through our minimum one-month training program, mm -hmm. which uh, can tell us uh, uh, going through housekeeping techniques and other support units such as customer service, security, uh, health and safety, uh, grooming, uh, and uh, so on. That ensures that by the time we're preparing them to be able to be launched into our, our clients' premises, and they are well set up, they are well, um, they love what they're doing uh, and they are well groomed to be able to ensure that uh, they're delivering ex the services that are expected of the client, if not at all to exceed them.
and extending this benefit of service, um, I, I, I guess uh, you, you're best uh, in Nairobi. And uh, I don't know, maybe if there are any plans uh, to go regional? Well, uh, our Pets Vision is, mm. is uh, to be the leading uh, uh, hospitality and services provider in, uh, in Africa and Africa. Europe. Okay. We're looking at Africa as, as, as a scope here. And uh, as part of our expansion plan, okay, we're currently in Kenya, we, are, we, we, are, we have offices in all the regional um, centers within the country. Mm -hmm. In Mombasa, in Nakuru, in Eldoret, in Kisumu, and so on. Do you have some proud moments when you look back 14 years from now, or rather 14 years ago? Well, um, there are very many proud moments. Uh, um, first and foremost, uh, our first pride is, 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 is the clients that we service up today. Um, we have to, we're servicing over 200 clients, and thanks to to all of them uh, who have been supportive through the years. And a lot of them have actually been with us from the beginning. Uh -huh. So they've walked uh, with you? We've walked uh, in, through this journey with, uh, I would say, 90% of our clients have been long-term clients that we've serviced mm -hmm. through and through. Uh, and, um, and also the staff, the dedicated team of staff that have been there uh, through and through without having to lose sleep on it. We work 24 hours, seven days a week in most of our installations. And um, for us, that's our greatest pride, that uh, we're, do uh, uh, we're doing a good job at it. And uh, the recognitions that have come through it, um, that we take uh, pride in, and uh, with a lot of humility, um, recognize the, <laughs> the, 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 the outcomes of such a service that we provided. And um, as a company, we've been recognized uh, uh, twice in the top 100 uh, mid-sized companies uh, awards. And um, uh, as a CEO, I was also mm -hmm. recognized as the top 40 and the 40 uh, um, businessmen in Kenya. And um, a lot of other things that are related to awards that we've received from uh, associate clients that we've been servicing um, as the best outsourced service companies um, in two or three companies that have always conduct their annual um, uh, survey through the staff and through the students mm -hmm. or, or, um, or uh, of these particular institutions. Mm -hmm. How many people do you employ directly? Currently we have a staff count of about 2,000 staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. 2,000? Directly and uh, indirectly. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> uh, directly, uh, we must be supporting as, as many people. Uh, by doing a math of two and a half, I mean probably about 4,000, 5,000 staff. Uh, ideally through um, support systems uh, and families, 4,000, 5,000 families we are supporting indirectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So quitting your very plum job in the hospitality industry, and just coming to start up uh, this enterprise, no regrets whatsoever. Well, I have no regrets whenever you have uh, set out a good dream. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you uh, you believe in something that is is going to be done right, um, you, no one has any um, no reason to have any regrets at all. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, one of my greatest drivers is that. Um, I'm, I'm offering opportunity for employment for young Kenyans. And um, this, I, I want us to walk through this journey of uh, being able to empower our youth in doing something useful with their lives and actually creating careers of, of, uh, of actually um, uh, work that has always been considered to be just casual labor. Actually, people can make a whole career in uh, the hospitality industry. And mm -hmm. That's my joy to be able to see uh, a Kenya that is being able to look at hospitality in focus, uh, in 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 uh, and in building uh, young entrepreneurs in otherwise um, functionality that are always considered to mm -hmm. be not so cool or not so plump. And you see, that's actually what this show is all about: promoting the entrepreneurial spirit but just before I let you go I just want to get what's your cleaning tip of the day 
ideally I would like to to to, to throw in a word to to homeowners. Mm -hmm. Let's appreciate the housekeepers or the maids that service or serve you every evening. Because and with a little bit of training from that part, they can be able to make great uh, people and uh, whatever duties that they set out to do every day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them wake up from 6 o'clock in the morning, if not earlier, and go to rest after 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, when you're going to rest. They're, that, uh, they're doing their best. And I would urge every homeowner to invest in them if they can to make them a better person. Because at the end of the day, if all of us Kenyans become better persons in whatever that we're doing, then we'll all rise up together. It's, no, it's a win-win situation, mm -hmm. and I think it's best that we look at and address some of those areas, such as um, watchmen and uh, maids and so on, to be able to uplift them in becoming better persons. And it's through us that we should offer that kind of investment mm -hmm. to make them uh, better persons. Well, I'll say. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Uh, yes. Nice talking. That's you're the pacer for this week. Oh, thank you. Great job, much. eh? All right. Congratulations. All the best. Well, you've just had it from himself. He's just talked about, you know, starting up a business from scratch, very humbly, believing in yourself and making a difference, even in the lives of people that you service. It's just beyond giving them a much needed service, but also making a difference and leaving a permanent impression. Well, that's just been our peak for Pesetas this week. We've been talking to Alex Jagger, the CEO, Parapet Clinic Services. I am Richard Kagoy. Good night.